We, together with our allies, not just in the G7, but around the world, everywhere from Australia to Singapore to Switzerland, we put on the toughest sanctions and we push back the Russian economy by decades. We also supplied weapons to Ukraine and many around this chamber have commented that maybe we should have supplied weapons earlier, but I can tell you from working inside the government that we did all we could as quickly as we could to persuade allies and we have built up now an alliance of countries supplying those weapons and I can't wait to see the tanks and I can't wait to see the fighter jets in Ukraine to help those brave Ukrainians. We also coordinated with our allies an international response. And at the United Nations, 141 countries stood up against Russian, in, Russian invasion and what Russia had done. And that too was unprecedented. We were complacent about freedom and democracy after the Cold War. We were told it was the end of history and that freedom and democracy were guaranteed and we could carry on living our lives, not really worrying about what else had happened, that there wouldn't be a challenge to those basic principles that we'd won the argument. I think we know now that that argument is never finally won. And we need to keep winning the argument. We need to keep defending our values with hard security and economic security if we are to succeed. So first of all, we need to do all we can to make sure Ukraine wins this war as soon as possible. Every extra day are lives lost, women violated, towns destroyed. We need to do all we can as fast as we can. My view is that does include fighter jets and you know, we've had a discussion today about which are the best possible options you know, having spoken to the Ukrainians about this months and months ago I know what they want is an option mm. they want so let's work with our allies to get them an option uh, to be able to use because otherwise they won't be able to prevail and we also need to make sure that Russia pays for the crimes it has committed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The appalling atrocities and war crimes need to be held to the count, all of them. And we need to make sure that money seized from the Russian state is used to rebuild Ukraine. That to me is vitally important. Of course, we in well-off countries like Britain should, should contribute. But I cannot imagine a situation where Russia can simply go ahead as if nothing had happened mm -hmm. and don't contribute to rebuilding Ukraine. I think that is absolutely vital and I will be pushing for that to happen. Operations. But the third thing we need to learn is about how we deal with authoritarian regimes more broadly. Mm -hmm. And President Xi has made it very, very clear about his intentions with respect to Taiwan. We have to take these seriously. Now, during the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the invasion by Russia of Ukraine, we have amassed, for the first time in history, a group of nations who are prepared to put on sanctions, who are prepared to act together. We need to formalize this grouping I've described it as an economic NATO. The G7 plus our key allies, like the EU, like South Korea, like Australia, we need to bring that group together and start developing our plans now. Because what we know is that we ended up doing these things after the invasion of Ukraine. And my view is prevention is far better than cure. So let's develop these economic tools. And let's be clear with China exactly what would happen <clears throat> if there was an escalation with respect to Taiwan. Let's be clear about that now. Mm. 